Okay, hello everyone. This is Victor Momo from Excel Moments. I hope you've seen my first video on calculating the number of months in a year that end on a Friday, but that could have been any other day for that matter. Okay, so this is a follow-up question and follow-up video to that where uh, we're required to find the number of Fridays in a year, in a given year. You know that since a year has 52 weeks, it should be 52 or maybe somewhere in that neighborhood, maybe 53 depending on how the year starts. Okay, so that's what I'm going to show you in this video. I'm going to do it in two ways, but let's kick off. The logic is very simple here and it's similar to the first. I will try to write out all the days of the year from January 1st to December 31st. And I will use the weekday function to test what day of the week they are. If they're Friday, you know, then I just do a count and I get the number of Fridays. So let's kick off. The first day of the year is obviously, you know, I will use the date function here. This is my year. And I have one and uh, one, right? Control enter. Good. So 1st of January 2018. The beautiful thing about the date function is that the both the day, the month, they, they can all do that interesting spillover. If I give it a month that is greater than the number of months in January, rather than giving an error, it spills to the next month. So I know January has 31 days, but if I give it 32, what's it going to do? The 32nd day of January is the first day of February. It's going to spill over. So Control enter. So you see we have 1st of February. So for the fact that the date function can do this, it means that I can take advantage of that last argument and then create, you know, a sequence of 365 days. And I know that it will constantly spill, giving me the right date. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use the sequence function and create a sequence of 365. Close, close. So the sequence of 365 will give you 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, all the way to 365. So day one, day two, and so on. Press Control Enter, and you see it spills all the way. Okay, so that's it. So with one formula, we've gotten all the days, you know, of the year. Now, what I'm just going to do here is, you know, to use the weekday function. Test. Is it um, a Friday? So I know I explained this in the first video. If you don't use the second argument of the weekday function, it takes Sunday as day one and Friday will obviously be day six. So if you test if this equals to six, that's a Friday, you know, and then you go down. So what you can do is you can just use um, maybe one times this, or let me do it in a different way. Here, someone says, oh, Victor is stuck on this one times. So let's use zero plus <laughs> this. Okay, this is our formatted as date. I will use Control Shift tilde to bring them back. So what I'm just going to do is zero for any day that is not a Friday, one for a Friday. So I just do a sum. I go down and I do Alt equals. Uh, so I get 52. Okay, so that's it. So that's how you do it. But this is not how I typically do it. I'll do it in one cell. Okay, so, but you get the logic now. That's exactly what we are going to do here. Now, there's only one more thing that will be different, which you have to take note of. There, I use 365. That's assuming that it's not a leap year. A leap year has 366 days. So you need to find a construct that can do 365 for a non-leap year and 366 for a leap year. So I typically do it this way. Uh, for a, a year is a leap year if you divide it by 4 and it gives a remainder of 0. So I, I can do something like this. Mod, mod tells you the remainder when a number is divided by another. So if I do mod of this divided by 4, you would see, it gives me 2. Any year that is a leap year, it gives me 0. Okay, so 2020 is a leap year. So what I'll do is I will check mod of this and test if it's equals to 0, right? This will give me true or false. That's what it's going to give me. So if I add a 365 to it, so think about it. When it's a leap year, this is going to give you true. 365 plus true will give you 366, which is what you want. But when it's not a leap year, this will give you false. 365 plus false will give you 365, which is what you want. So this would work, and that's my construct for that. Just wanted to point that out before I go in to using it. Good. So let's go in now. So what we are going to do here is we are going to use the date function. 
just like we did in the helper cells but i'm just doing it all in one cell now date function and then the year i'm going to lock it in such a way that um, three is free to move so i can copy the formula to the other rows my month is one then here i'm going to use sequence function okay to create the 365 days but like i said it's either going to be 365 or 366 so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to say 365 plus mod that's find the, the remainder when i divide the year here by four okay so i test if this is equal to zero just to avoid any confusion i put the brackets explicitly huh? so this is going to give me that true or false when i add it to 365 it will give me 365 366 and so on so put another bracket okay so um one more i think yes and then we have the date function done so all i'm going to do here is i'm going to test using weekday i'm going to test so all i have in here are the 365 or 366 dates all in here huh? so if you select everything and evaluate F9, oh okay sorry i should evaluate date function i think all the way down here oops what am i doing wrong oh okay if i close the day okay this and date okay so i'm not sure why that's happening <laughs> oh yeah well so that's what we have internally okay so now we are just going to test if the weekday of all of this is equals to six if you test this one now you're going to get true false true false true false okay so wherever it's a friday it's going to be true wherever it's not it's going to be false so what i'm going to do is then multiply that by one so i can convert the booleans to what numbers okay Control A and F9 again. I have to press function F9. And I see, you know, all the zeros and ones. The ones are the numbers I'm interested in. And the others are not Friday. So I put a sum. So I could sum them up. So when I sum all the ones together, it tells me the number of Fridays I have, which is 52. I double click this down. And yeah, all well and good. Sorry, I wasn't wearing my glasses. I guess that's why I couldn't see <laughs> those brackets over there, but that's fine. So that's how you get it done. So let's do it in one more way. I'm not sure where I saw this or whether I thought about it myself, or maybe it was Layla, I think. Yeah, using the network based function. So what we're going to do with the network days function is we'll take advantage of the network days international function for the international because what's the, what's the key difference between network days and network days international? Let me show you. So network days, you see the argument start date, end date, holidays. Okay. International, it adds what a weekend. So in any country where Saturday Sunday is not their weekend and they have a different week. Or working structure you can take advantage of network days international right so that you can change the weekend structure and get the number of working days but there's something that's peculiar about it and i know i have made a video on this or if you check my channel network days international function you would see that beyond the um, options it shows you it already has some embedded you know, string structure that can allow you to specify which days are working days and which days are not working days, depending on, you know, your own case. So what we are going to do here is this. We are going to check from 1st of January of that year to 31st of December. We are going to make only Friday a working day. So what it means is that Friday is the only working day to keep counting Fridays, Fridays, Fridays. So whatever it comes up with as the total number of working days, you know, that's the number of Fridays in the year makes sense right so let me show you the only thing you probably may not know about the function because most people should be familiar with the network days international so we'll start with the first date the date is going to be uh 2018 well i could just lock it for the fun of it first first so we are starting from what first of january to the last day of the year which we all know so i'm going to hard code it right 
because it's known it's going to be 12 what 31 right so this start date this end date now the weekend so you see the options i have here my weekend could be saturday sunday sunday monday but if this isn't what i have in my own case then i will use the string approach with the string approach you start from monday and if you write one then it means it's not a working day if you put it as zero then it's a working day so it's going to look something like this monday we are not working tuesday no wednesday no thursday no we're working on friday so zero we're not working on saturday we're not working on sunday this is the very important part of it which you will never know except you read the documentation so this way we are only working on friday so it means that when it counts from 1st to 31st of December, 1st of January, 31st of December, and we are working only on Friday, the number of working days is obviously the number of Fridays in the year. So let's close the bracket. Control Enter, 52. Right, 52, 52, 53 only in 2021. I think that jives with this. And that's how you get it done. Okay, so... <sighs> Wow, that took a lot out of me. Okay, so if you like this video, um, hit the like button. You can also subscribe to the channel Excel Moments. And like I always say, if you can think it, Excel most likely can do it. If you have suggestions on some other ways we can approach it, you know, that's more than welcome. You can put them, you know, in the comment section. And if you have some other recommendations or requests for videos, feel free to ask and I will be glad to oblige. For now, I'm out.